Hello everyone, thank you for having me here at the ICL GNSS Conference 2020. Today I will present to you a paper entitled Lossy Compression Methods for Performance Restricted Variable Devices that I created in the cooperation with my colleagues from Tampere, Finland and Castellon, Spain. My name is Lucie Klus and let's have a look at the agenda. Today we will start with the motivation regarding variable computing followed by goals and the dataset that we used for this work. Then I will mention several of the methods that we used, followed by the analysis of their performance. After that, I will present the results of our work and a brief conclusion. Let's start with variables. Variables are sensor-based devices worn on a human body. Some of the examples are smartwatches, heart rate monitors, baby control and tracking devices, and many others. There are many requirements on these devices, such as their small size and light construction. But the main requirement is the battery life. The battery should last for as long as possible and should not be drained by redundant operations. Some of the built-in sensors may include PPG heart rate sensor, GPS modules, or thermometers. Majority of sensors produce time series data. An example of such a kind of data is heart rate, which is also one of the most commonly measured types of data across all variables. As different variables serve a different purpose, the required measurement frequency and accuracy also differs. Let's consider the following scenarios based on different heart rate measurements requirements. Low requirement variables meant for example for casual tracking, do not require often or very accurate measurements, whereas variables, which are designed to detect emergency situations, such as cardiac arrest, require low latency and reliable accuracy of the system. Therefore, the main goal of this work is to determine a suitable lossy compression method for variable applications for optimal performance in different scenarios. Based on the scenario and the variable purpose, we consider the performance of the compression method in terms of compression abilities, meaning how much we can compress the measured data while keeping the error of decompression as small as possible, the compression complexity, since the complexity of compression is directly connected to the amount of energy required to perform it, long-term storage abilities, and low latency system requirements. By this, we aim to improve the storage and transfer efficiency in variable devices, mainly in reducing the size of the data and minimizing the processing requirements. To compare the considered methods, we've applied them on a dataset called an open dataset for human activity analysis using smart devices. The considered measurements include almost 92,000 samples measured on a smartwatch by one user over 15 days. On the right, you can see a histogram of a granularity of the measurement sampling intervals. Now, let's present the compression methods we utilized in this work. Discrete cosine transform was chosen as a commonly used representative of transform Bain's compression methods, widely utilized in image and video formats. It extracts the different frequency features from the input of the fixed size. The compression is based on setting the insignificant features to zero. In this work, we combine it with run-length encoding in order to remove the redundancy from the data. The important parameter of DCT is the block size or step, which has been set to 100 for the following analysis. The second method, lightweight temporal compression, is a linear approximation-based method specifically designed for time series data compression in sensor devices. It sets the boundaries between samples using linear margins and interpolates between them until one goes out of bounds. Symbolic aggregate approximation is a method designed to compress a time series data in both axes. 
First, it applies piecewise aggregate approximation to average samples in specific intervals. Then, it assigns the averaged value to one of the levels called also alphabet symbols of the y-axis. Other symbolic aggregate approximation is the compression method designed by the authors of this work to overcome some of the shortcomings of the previously mentioned methods. Just like Sachs, it discretizes the y-axis but assigns each sample to the closest alphabet symbol. It then outputs only the first sample of the same symbol sequence. The previously mentioned methods were compared in terms of several evaluation metrics. For the error of reconstruction, we used root mean square error between the original data and its reconstruction, recalculated into percentage as you can see in the equation. Compression ratio was used as the metric describing the ratio of sizes of original data to the compressed data. Compression time evaluates how fast is the compression of the data. And finally, the latency corresponds to the ability of the system to promptly transmit the data after receiving it. In this slide, we can see the figure comparing the four methods in terms of their compression ratio and the error of reconstruction. As you can see, the best trade-off has the lightweight temporal compression across all compression ratios, while the discrete cosine transforms perform the worst. ASACs and SACs have similar performance. ASACs perform slightly better on the compression ratios below 5, while SACs outperforms ASACs at higher CRs. Here, we can see the comparison of four methods in terms of the compression ratio to compression time dependency. Based on the simulation, lightweight temporal compression and discrete cosine transform require approximately five times longer to compress the data than the two remaining methods. The best compression ratio to compression time trade-off has symbolic aggregate approximation across majority of compression ratios. As mentioned on one of the previous slides, the discrete cosine transform takes a specified number of samples and processes them all at once in a block. We perform an additional analysis of DCT based on the varying size of these steps. In the left figure, you can see that when compressing the blocks of 20,000 samples, the technique may achieve way higher compression ratios than when working with way smaller blocks, for example, of 100 samples only. Also, the reconstruction error of this compression utilizing bigger step is significantly smaller. Based on the right figure, the computational time required to compress the whole dataset in the bigger blocks is also significantly smaller than the time required by the smaller blocks. To conclude the analysis, Utilizing DCT with larger block sizes is significantly more efficient. On the other hand, the utilization of DCT with larger blocks is not always possible, since the variable device may require frequent transmissions of data in intervals in which the required amount of data cannot be measured. Let's shortly summarize the findings. For this work, we picked four compression methods, one of which was designed by the authors, and evaluated them based on several criteria in order to produce recommendation on their application in variable devices in different scenarios. We concluded that DCT with relatively small block sizes is inefficient in all metrics we considered. On the other hand, DCT with significant block sizes performed very well in terms of compression error as well as computational time. We conclude that it is highly suitable as the method for long-term data storage purposes and that it is not suitable in systems that we require high dynamics of data. Lightweight temporal compression had excellent results in terms of compression error, yet worse performance in terms of complexity. As it was designed for sensor systems, we recommend this method to be used on devices that need to utilize the compression for battery saving purposes, but have to report the data as accurately as possible. 
sex compression performed on mediocre level in terms of reconstruction error, but had excellent results regarding computational times. As it is possible to further losslessly compress the alphabet of this method, it is suitable for long-term compression purposes. A compression method proposed by authors, Altered Symbolic Aggregate Approximation, had average performance in terms of compression error and good performance in terms of computational times. Aside from that, the main advantage of this method is its ability to perform with almost no latency, as every new sample is able to be sent immediately without delay. Our recommendation is to use this method for communication systems requiring very fast reaction times. Thank you for your attention. Now I would like to acknowledge the funding this work received from European Union Horizon 2020 Marie Skłodowska Curie Training Network. My name is Lucie Klus and I prepare this work in cooperation with Simona Lohan, Carlos Cranel and Yari Nurmi. If you have any questions, please ask me in the following discussion or contact me via email. Thank you.